This video is designed to help you start an agriculture business. At the end of the video, you'll find a valuable gift. It's an agriculture business plan that you can download and will lay down for you, step by step, everything you need to know to start a successful agriculture business of your own. If you are new to this channel, make sure to hit the subscribe button for more videos like this. Before starting an agriculture business, you must choose what kind of farm you want to run. There are many options, and each one presents its own pros and cons. You will need to base your choice on a balance of passion, what can I wake up every morning, and be happy doing. And good business sense. With experience and education, the decision about the type of farm you want to run, will be a bit easier. Most of your decisions will be based on location, amount of land, and budget. Remember that while passion is key, it's essential to consider more than your favorite crop. Understand that farming is a business, and you must know what the market can handle. These are some types of farms to consider. Dairy farm. Specifically dedicated to the production of milk, typically cows or goats, a dairy farmer can have as few as one animal, a few hundred, or even a few thousand. Milk used for drinking will need special equipment to comply with government guidelines. Crop farm. Whether growing fruits, vegetables, or grains, these farms are dedicated to feeding people. For a small farm, this might mean a diversified list of various crops, sold locally at farmers markets or co-ops. Larger farms tend to stick with only one type of crop, and may rely on large corporate deals for their produce. Always consider your market and ask, what crops will grow in my location, and who is going to buy them? Poultry farm. Poultry farms, chickens and turkeys, are typically used for meat but may also supply eggs. Many smaller farms featuring cage-free. Locally produced poultry and eggs, are competing with larger scale producers. Flower Farm Producing cut flowers for sale, flower farms supply their products to florists, who then sell the product to an end user. This type of small farm may also sell at farmers markets, or to local grocery chains. Orchard or Vineyard Dedicated to growing fruit, orchards and vineyards require special types of soil and weather patterns, and are only viable in certain parts of the United States. Apple orchards, for instance, plant well in many regions in the U.S., but grape vineyards and olive farms require the warmer climates found in the West and South. Hay farm. Also, a crop farm, this type of farm grows hay, or other grains, used to feed livestock. This requires a sizable amount of land and heavy equipment, such as tractors, rakes and balers, and storage areas. Market analysis and customer base. Just growing things isn't enough to make a farm successful. Like any business, you must conduct a thorough market analysis, and match your crop to your customer base. Finding your customer base is one of the most critical aspects of running a viable farming business. You need to know who will buy your products. I've seen people and heard of people investing a lot of money into infrastructure, thinking, well gosh, everybody is going to want it. Well, guess what? That's not the case. There's a lot of competition out there. Cost estimates. Before getting your hands dirty as a farmer, you need to crunch some numbers. Remember, farming can be expensive. And the numbers will change based on a variety of factors such as your location, the type of farm you plan to run, and the size. How much money does it take to start a farm? Because farming is also a business, it is necessary to understand exactly how much it will cost to farm. And it's a complicated question with no general answer. However, you can expect to spend anywhere from $1,000-$20,000 to start a small-scale farming operation. Large-scale operations can cost well over $2 million to start. To clarify your costs, create a comprehensive list of everything you need. Consider these costs of starting a farm, land. Obviously, you need a parcel of land to grow your food, or keep your animals. If you already have property, you could start a small farm in your own backyard. If you need to buy or rent land, Factor that into your startup costs. Equipment and machinery. Requirements for equipment depend on the type of farm. Large crops may require tractors and storage buildings, among other equipment. Dairy farms may require special milking and pasteurizing equipment. Animals require fences, outbuildings, and a variety of handling equipment. If you're making products on site, you need a manufacturing space for production equipment and labeling. It may be possible to borrow or share equipment at the beginning which is a great way to keep your costs low. Other potential cost factors, soil preparation, seeds, irrigation, cooling and storage, packaging, marketing, animal and veterinary costs, if running a dairy or poultry farm, begin operations. Once you gain some farming education, 
secure your funding and insurance, and have everything ready on paper, it's time to get things up and running. Get your land, buy your animals, sow your seeds. These details will be seasonal and time sensitive, depending on which type of farm you want to start. The next part of the video is not specific to the agriculture business. Nevertheless, this knowledge is essential for success in the agriculture business, as well as in any other business. Ignore it at your own peril. Operating a successful agriculture business will depend on the following four conventions. 1. A practical plan, with a solid foundation. 2. Dedication, and willingness to sacrifice, to reach your goal. 3. Technical skills. 4. Basic knowledge of management, finance, record keeping and market analysis. As a new owner, you will need to master these skills, and techniques, if your business is to be successful. Finding a niche. Small businesses range in size from a manufacturer, with many employees, and millions of dollars in equipment, to the lone window washer, with a bucket and a sponge. Obviously, the knowledge and skills, required for these two extremes, are far apart, but for success they have one thing in common. Each has found a business niche, and is filling it. The most critical problems you will face, in your early planning, will be to find your niche, and determine the feasibility of your idea. Get into the right business at the right time, is very good advice, but following that advice, may be difficult. Many entrepreneurs plunge into a business venture, so blinded by the dream, that they fail to thoroughly evaluate its potential. Is your business idea feasible? Before you invest time, effort, and money, the following exercise will help you separate sound ideas, from those bearing a high potential for failure. Identify and briefly describe, the business you plan to start. Identify the product or service, you plan to sell. Answering yes, to any of the following three questions, means you are on the right track. A negative answer, to all of them, means the road ahead could be rough. 1. Does your product or service, satisfy an unfilled need? 2. Will your product or service, serve an existing market, in which demand exceeds supply? 3. Will your product or service be competitive, based on its quality, selection, price, or location? Market Analysis for a small business to be successful, the owner must know the market. To learn the market, you must analyze it, a process that takes time and effort. You don't have to be a trained statistician, to analyze the marketplace, nor does the analysis have to be costly. Analyzing the market is a way to gather facts, about potential customers, and to determine the demand for your product or service. The more information you gather, the greater your chances of capturing a segment of the market. Know the market before investing your time and money in any business venture. The following questions, will help you collect the information necessary to analyze your market, and determine if your product or service will sell. This brief exercise will give you a good idea, of the kind of market planning you need to do. An answer of no, to any of the questions, indicates a weakness in your plan, so do your research, until you can answer each question with a yes. 1. Do you know who your customers will be? 2. Do you understand their needs and desires? Three. Do you know where they live? 4. Will you be offering the kind of products or services, that they will buy? 5. Will your prices be competitive, in quality and value? 6. Will your promotional program be effective? 7. Do you understand how your business compares with your competitors? 8. Will your business be conveniently located, for the people you plan to serve? 9. Will there be adequate parking facilities, for the people you plan to serve? planning your startup. The following questions are grouped according to function, they are designed to help you prepare for opening day. Merchandise. Have you decided what items you will sell or produce, or what services you will provide? Have you made a merchandise plan, based upon estimated sales, to determine the amount of inventory you will need to control purchases? Have you found reliable suppliers, who will assist you in the startup? Have you compared the prices, quality, and credit terms, of suppliers? Business records. Are you prepared to maintain complete records, of sales, income and expenses, accounts payable, and receivables? Have you determined how to handle payroll records, tax reports, and payments? Do you know what financial reports, should be prepared, and how to prepare them? Finances. A large number of small businesses, fail each year. There are a number of reasons for these failures, but one of the main reasons is insufficient funds. Too many entrepreneurs try to start and operate a business, without sufficient capital, money. To avoid this dilemma, 
You can review your situation by analyzing the following three questions. 1. How much money do you have? 2. How much money will you need to start your business? 3. How much money will you need to stay in business? In order to answer the second question, how much money will you need to start your business? You need to prepare an estimate of all your startup costs. Here is a list of items you may need to take into account. Note that this list is for a retail business. Items will vary for service, construction, manufacturing or online firms. Decorating and remodeling, fixtures and equipment, installing fixtures and equipment, services and supplies, beginning inventory cost, legal, professional fees, licenses and permits, telephone utility deposits, insurance, signs, advertising for opening, unanticipated expenses. Now, the answer to the third question, how much money will you need to stay in business? Must be divided into two parts, immediate costs, and future costs. From the moment the door to your new business opens, a certain amount of income may come in. However, this income should not be projected in your operating expenses. You will need enough money available, to cover costs for at least the first three months of operation. The following list will help you project your operating expenses, on a monthly basis. Typical expenses for one month may include, your living costs, employee wages, rent, advertising, supplies, utilities, insurance, taxes, maintenance, delivery, transportation, miscellaneous. Now sum up the total estimated monthly expenses, and multiply it by 3. This is the amount of cash you will need, to cover operating expenses for 3 months. Deposit this amount in a savings account, before opening your business. Use it only for those purposes listed in the above list, because this money will ensure that you will be able to continue in business during the crucial early stages. By adding the total startup costs, to the total expenses for 3 months, you can learn what the estimated costs will be to start and operate your business for 3 months. By subtracting the totals of the lists from the cash available, you can determine the amount of additional financing you may need, if any. Now you will need to estimate your operating expenses for the first year after startup. The first step in determining your annual expenses, is to estimate your sales volume, month by month. Next, determine the cost of sales. You may want to use a spreadsheet to do this. After startup, the primary source of revenue in your business, will be from sales, but your sales will vary from month to month, because of seasonal patterns, and other factors. It is important to determine if your monthly sales will produce enough income to pay each month's bills. An estimated cash flow projection will show if the monthly cash balance, is going to be subject to such factors as the following, failure to recognize seasonal trends, excessive cash taken from the business, for living expenses, too rapid expansion, and slow collection of accounts, if credit is extended to customers. Conclusion. If you have carefully answered all the questions in this video, you have seriously thought about your goal. However, there may be some things you may feel you need to know more about. Owning and running an agriculture business is a continuous learning process. Research your idea, and do as much as you can, yourself, but don't hesitate to seek help from people who can tell you what you need to know. As we conclude this video, it's time you get your free agriculture business plan gift. Go to the description below this video, to get it now. It is completely free, no strings attached. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please, like, and hit the subscribe button, for more videos like this.